Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. So I continue my uh, learning on the uh, Dhammapada verses and in this video I will be sharing uh, my learnings from uh, Dhammapada verses 301 to 320. Uh, this is the book that I am using for reference, the Dhammapada by Eknath Iswaran. Uh, this is a very good book, you can also refer it uh, for your reading purposes. Uh, uh, there is also a playlist, Dhammapada playlist by the name of Dhammapada where you can see the videos of all the verses that I have done on this channel. So let us start. We we'll start with verse number 301. So here we are continuing with the theme of varied verses where Buddha is talking about qualities of the uh, disciples of the Buddha. So verse 301 Buddha says, Disciples of Gautama are wide awake and vigilant, is rejoicing in meditation day and night. So it's like one of the qualities of the Buddha. They are wide awake and uh, they are disciplined. They are in meditation and rejoicing day and night. Verse 302, Buddha says, It is hard to leave the world and hard to live in it. Painful to live with the worldly and painful to be a wanderer. Reach the goal. You will wander and suffer no more. So here Buddha is, is comparing the reality of both family life as well as being an ascetic, being a like a monk or a wanderer. Both there is suffering. So, when you live in family life, then there are all the struggles and the pressures of everyday life. That is a suffering. And then when you are wanderer, when you are just by alone, then also there is loneliness and lot of things that are there. Not getting food, not getting the, the essential basics of your, of, of you know, uh, survival. Buddha is saying, reach the goal. Buddha is basically encouraging us, whether you are in family life or you are a wanderer, just reach the goal, right? Train your mind to reach the goal. When you reach the goal, there you will wander and suffer no more. There will be no wandering and no suffering. So Buddha is saying, keep whether you are in parallel life or whether you are a wanderer, keep your mind on the goal of becoming free from suffering. Go on the Buddha's path and at the earliest try to achieve that goal. Verse 303-304, Buddha says, Those who are good and pure in conduct are honored wherever they go. The good shine like the Himalayas, whose peak glisten above the rest of the world, even when seen from a distance. Others pass unseen, like an arrow shot at night. So here Buddha is talking about the uh, the how uh, the those who are good and pure. He is like goading everyone to be pure in conduct because those people are honored wherever they go. And Buddha is giving the analogy of Himalayas. They shine like Himalayas, even from a distance. You can see. And you can just marvel at them. And then others are like an arrow shot at night. If there is a night darkness and an arrow is shot, nobody will know that even an arrow has been shot. So they are like that, uh, the who are not good and pure in conduct. Verse 305 Buddha says, Sitting alone, sleeping alone, going about alone, van vanquish the ego by yourself alone. Abiding joy will be yours when all selfish desires end. So here basically Buddha is saying whatever you do you have to do it alone right don't expect support and all the help and all could come to you you have to sitting alone so this has implications not only this is not addressed only to a monk these Dhammapada verses are mainly aimed at lay people right people like you and me who are in the worldly life but so my understanding is that even if though we are in our worldly life we can still in our mind be free from the bondages of the worldly life Sitting alone, like in a sitting meditation, we are just doing our meditation, sleeping alone, going about, walking mindfully alone, right? Vanquish the ego by yourself alone. So Buddha always says, is that you are your own savior. You have to do your own effort. No one will do the effort for you. So we, by doing everything alone, we vanquish, extinguish the ego and abiding joy will be yours when the selfish desires end. When all our selfish desires end, then abiding joy will be found. Now the next verses is on the downward course. The theme is downward course. You know, things that take us down, the karma that take us down, our selfish desires and all, they take us in the downward zone. So th verse 306 Buddha says, One who says what is not true, one who denies what he has done, both choose the downward course. After death, these two become partners in falsehood. So either Buddha says one who is 
one who is like lies or see, says false speech right which is contrary to the uh, uh, buddha's core five precepts no lying is one of the precepts so those who violate that one who denies what he has done one who denies what he has done doesn't you know if even if he has done something good he denies that both or or something is like some one has com committed a crime and he denies that doesn't accept it with humility that i have made a mistake so buddha says both choose the downward course see buddha's total lesson lesson uh, total learning is that we go as per we proceed in life and in our further lives as per our karmas so if our karmas are something that we have done depending upon karmas we born we get born into the life uh, and the realm that 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 we are and then our life continues right so we cannot escape our karmas so here when we do something which is not not we should not have done we build up karmas and then we choose the downward course verse 307308 very important verse and this is very important for the monks and also for the lay people right those who put on the saffron robe but remain ill mannered and undisciplined are dragged down by their evil deeds it is better for an undisciplined monk to swallow a red hot ball of iron than to live on the charity of the devout so very very important thing what buddha has said for the monks that if you are a monk if you wear the robe then you have a special responsibility for example for the lay people we have the five precepts but for the uh, monks and the nuns there are eight precepts and even more than that 10 or even more precepts that they have to follow they have to be even more careful of the conduct because see the monks what they live is on charity people who give the charity the lay people who give the charity they give the charity with the expectation that these monks they are living the life of the dharma they are devoting themselves fully towards the dharma but if a monk is not devoting themselves to the dharma they are ill mannered so they attract even larger karma on themselves so and the lesson here for the lay people is that we become lot of times i can say this for myself we becomes a lot of times fascinated by the monks and the you know the robes and everything and we think of live, giving up our worldly life for becoming a monk but that path is even more difficult in family life at least you have to observe the five precepts but and i have read it in the book the manual of insight where a monk if he or she uh, makes a you know error then in this life they will not attain the insight knowledge but for a lay person if they break the precept also they they can correct it and you know so lay person has to understand that it's not necessary to become a monk the it is very ardent it is very difficult you know life to become a monk because they have to follow so many precepts you can be in a family life not you know become a monk and follow the buddha's path and achieve full liberation right so buddha said liberation is not only for the monks it's all for everyone right if they follow the path verse 309 3010 buddha says adultery this verse is on adultery people having extramarital affairs people not loyal with their partners adultery leads to loss of merit loss of sleep condemnation and increasing suffering on this downward course what pleasure can there be for a frightened lying in the arms of the frightened both going in fear of punishment therefore do not commit adultery so buddha says adultery leads to loss of merit whatever merit that you have earned from your good deeds it gets lost loss of sleep because you are frightened of the fear that someone can find out condemnation from the society and increasing suffering increase we go on the downward path if we do that buddha says what pleasure will there be when there are two frightened people in uh, hold, holding each other in their arms when both are frightened and both know that they will create suffering so desist which is the noble truth number uh, sorry which is the precept number 3 no sexual misconduct so we need to ensure that we do not commit adultery because it's a sexual misconduct and it attracts wholesome karma right verse 311 buddha says as a blade of kusha grass can cut the finger when it is wrongly held ascetism practiced without discrimination can send one to the downward course so again this relates to the uh, verse 307 308 that we discussed 
that although ascetism looks very appealing or glory glorified but then if it's like a walking on the razor's edge which buddha says like a blade of kushas grass so if you practice then definitely there are benefits are much better because you are totally devoting the, yourself to to your sadhana to your practice but slight mistake can lead you to a downward course was 31213 3 an act performed carelessly a vow not kept a code of chastity not strictly observed these things bring little reward if anything is worth doing do it with all your heart a half hearted ascetic covers himself with more and more dust so buddha is saying a uh, certain things which we not do like act which is performed carelessly without mindfulness right so we need to be very mindful of our day to day conduct a vow not kept you promise something and you do not keep that promise a code of chastity that means if like for a monk they cannot have any sexual activity so something like a code is violated they bring little reward so buddha is basically trying to say that if you want to do anything do it with your full heart even following buddha's teachings there is no point just listening to the teachings but not practicing them if if anything is worth doing do with all your heart a half hearted ascetic covers himself with more and more dust that means more and more suffering he creates for himself don't be a half hearted ascetic either do be in a family life and do all the things towards the dharma or be an ascetic but then follow the ascetic the, the code of monastic discipline to the t verse 314 315 refrain from evil deeds which cause suffering later perform good deeds which can cause no suffering guard yourself well both within and without like a well defended fort don't waste a moment for the wasted moment send you on the downward course so here buddha is saying refrain from evil deeds which is this is right action in the noble eightfold path buddha talks about right action that means refraining from the unwholesome states and doing and encouraging or practicing the wholesome states so refrain from evil deeds know that they will bring suffering to you later perform good deeds which can cause no suffering guard yourself well so here buddha is saying see all these five sense doors when they come into contact with a external object for example through your eyes you see a beautiful woman and this gives rise to the latent seeds of lust in you the latent defilements in you of lust they so what it happens through the eyes but if you are mindful in your seeing in your hearing everything that becomes a guard you are not allowing the latent defilements to grow in you right so that way we need to guard ourselves like a well defined fort don't waste a moment in idle gossip or you know just being lazy because buddha is even saying that these wasted moments also lead us to suffering lead us to the downward course verse 316 to those who are ashamed of deeds they should not be ashamed or not ashamed of deeds they should be ashamed of follow the false doctrines of the do- downward course verse 317 those who fear what they ought not to fear and those who do not fear that they ought to fear follow follow the false doctrines of the downward course then 318 those who see wrong view where there is none those who do not see wrong view where there is follow the false doctrines of the downward course so here buddha is basically saying is what needs to be done you are not recognizing that you are denying that or you think that you have done something wrong like all the good conduct you say that it is bad and the bad conduct you say it is good and you do that conduct all that will create will take you to the downward course verse 319 but those who see wrong where there is wrong see no wrong where there is none right view right when so we think that everything is permanent this will take us to the downward course when we realize everything is impermanent nature of existence is three marks of nature of existence impermanence sorrow and non self when we realize we get the right view that this is how things are these things will give me suffering when i have the right view then i will not go in the downward course but when i think that everything is permanent this should give me a atta- uh, uh, pleasure i attach myself to the objects this will all send me to the downward course that is the importance of being in the buddha's teachings 
continuously studying and practicing these teachings every day and meditation meditation very very important along with the study of the teachings you need to also practice meditation i have made a video on insight meditation you can check that out i'll make more videos on insight meditation so you can also stay tuned for that verse 320 which is the last verse that we'll cover in this video patiently i shall bear harsh words as the elephant bears the arrows on the battlefield people are often inconsiderate the buddha is giving the example of an elephant and and in these further verses it's basically buddha is giving the analogy of an elephant so an elephant what it does that even if in a war the uh, uh, opposition party opposition the enemy throws the arrows at the elephant the arrows the elephant just bears that this is how we have to bear harsh words that are spoken to us we will not react we will be remaining mindful and calm i have made another video of what to do if someone is angry with you so buddha has given in a the sutra buddha had given a, the solutions on what we should do so we have to be mindful and calm in that situation this is verse 301 to 320 i hope this uh, the sharing is helpful to you in any way do share your learnings thoughts comments on these verses in the comments below thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya